Good morning. Have you ever tried to pet a newborn kitten or litter of kittens? Well, I have. One of my earliest memories is when I was about six years old trying to reach in to the, touch the unbearable cuteness of these new babies and the mama cat reached out with her sharp claws and lashed out at me and I jumped back. You see, she perceived that I was a threat, a danger to her babies, and that was her instinct to, to reach out and try to protect them, even though all I wanted to do was admire how beautiful they were. You know, instinct causes animals and humans to lash out when there's a perceived threat. Immediate danger sends us back to our tribes to hide behind our mamas and daddies, or if we're the mamas and daddies, to be the ones protecting the young ones. What's happening today when we feel threatened? Well, sometimes we lash out at each other with unkind words, unkind social media posts, or in real time by hoarding things that other people really need. I heard on the news this morning in the 15 minutes that I'm allowing myself about a medicine that um, may, and it's a big may, it might help people with COVID-19. And because of that perceived uh, bit of hope, what has happened is there are some doctors who are prescribing this for their family and friends who don't really need it, who don't have the virus, but just in case. And the result of this is that those people who actually need this medicine that does treat an, an illness that they already have, people who've been taking the medicine for years, are now unable to get their legitimate prescriptions filled. That is tribalism at its worst. It's an evolutionary re response to protect ourselves and, and our loved ones. But it's not the same thing as community. You see, tribalists see things as either good or bad, and people as either good or bad. David Brooks called tribalism the dark twin of community. You know, while community is built on mutual affection, tribalism is built on mutual hatred and suspicion. When perceived needs, sometimes wants are threatened, we revert to an us or them mentality. Tribalism is all about mistrust and community is the opposite. What does our faith have to say about these ideas? Well, you don't have to look far to see the inclusive, loving community that Jesus talks about, that he taught and that he lived. And furthermore, we find that even, even in times like this and even when there is real suffering, there is a way for us to let that awaken a new kind of generosity. When we are feeling deeply anxious and in the valley, maybe even feeling threatened or suffering loss, we have the capacity to respond, not like that mama cat lashing out, but like Jesus reaching out to lift up someone else. John 14, 27 uh, tells us this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Let us pray. Jesus, you shared peace around a table of anxiety, peace with bread, peace with the wine, peace in the face of un the uncertain, peace in the pace, place of pain. May we share tables of peace in places of pain, sharing food and friendship and words and life. Because you came to a fearful world and found your place around those tables. Amen. So whether your tables now are daily phone calls with friends and loved ones, or Zoom chats, or talking by email, or gathering around a family dinner table, maybe one that you haven't used in a while, remember that Jesus offers us the foundation on which to build a place of peace and a reason for hope. Grace and peace to you today and every day. Bye-bye.